Have you ever wondered why, I use this particular picture, for the second coming of Jesus? How will Jesus come back at his second coming? Will he arrive, riding on the back of a white horse? Or will he come back in a standing position upon a cloud? Few say he will come back riding on his chariot. Many say he will come back in a standing position. But most say he will return riding on a white horse. This study will show why I believe he will return riding upon his royal chariot. And it starts back in the book of Ezekiel. A little background on this opening scene. Ezekiel is in a trance, and in the trance, he sees a vision of himself being carried to the temple of God in Jerusalem. There the people are worshipping other gods, and even the priests themselves are worshipping other gods in secret, and in the view of the people. Therefore, the glory of God leaves his position above the Ark of the Covenant, in the Holies of Holy, and comes outside the temple, and pauses on the porch. Meanwhile his royal chariot, his taxi, comes to transport him from the temple, into heaven. And following, Ezekiel describes how his royal chariot looks. Scripture says, And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kibar. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. So, the wheels of the royal chariot of God are operated by the spirit of the cherubim that bears up the platform on which the glory of God sits. Scripture says, then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house, and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings, and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out the wheels also were beside them, and every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. So, the glory of God left the porch of the temple and stood over the cherubim, in the air, that was bearing up his royal chariot. And the cherubim mounted up from the earth, to meet the glory of God, in the air, and the glory of God, rested upon his chariot, operated by the spirit of the cherubim, in the wheels. Then, they transported him beside the east gate, which lead directly out of the temple mount. I want to pause here and speak about the glory of God. The glory of God is the garment that appears as a white cloud of light that God dresses himself in. Psalm 104, verse 2 says, Speaking of God, who covers thyself with light as with a garment. Once the temple was built for God by Solomon, God inhabited the temple in a glory cloud in the holies of holy above the mercy seat or the ark of the covenant. And he remained there until the vision of Ezekiel was fulfilled, at which time, he left his former earthly house, and ascended into heaven, from the Mount of Olives, on his royal chariot. A few examples of God being dressed in glory are as follows. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The glory of God is in His light. And He has the ability to allow His brightness to shine to the point of killing the onlooker, or to dim His glory to no light at all, as was the case with Jesus. God revealed Himself to these shepherds, by the sign of His glory, which was just bright enough to make them afraid. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father, with His angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. I believe the sign of the second coming of Jesus will be the sign of the gradual appearance of his glory that will precede his person because of the outreach of its brightness. And once he arrives in great glory with all his holy angels, 
he will reward every man according to his works. Now back to Ezekiel and the royal chariot of God. We left off at the glory of God, leaving the temple, and boarding his royal chariot, and his royal chariot, transporting him to the east gate, to exit the temple mount. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. I want you to notice, that the glory of God left the temple and stood on the porch of the temple, of his own propulsion. And from there, he waited for the arrival of his royal chariot. Then, he arose from the porch of the temple into the air. And his royal chariot mounted up from the earth to meet him in the air. And then the chariot came to bear him up. All that is to say, is God can transport himself, by himself, wherever he wills. But his preference is to be transported by his specially designated servants, the angels. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city. Once the glory of God became the head of the chariot, his mind became the mind of the cherubim, and the spirit of the cherubim was in the wheels. And as God thought, the cherubim thought, and the wheels moved according to the thoughts of the cherubim. Now, the mountain on the east of the city of Jerusalem, is the Mount of Olives, and God in His glory, thought to leave the city and to stand on the Mount of Olives, and His royal chariot performed His pleasure and stood on the mount. It is this place that God chose to leave the earth, and return to heaven. And it will be this same place, that He will return from heaven, to stand back on the earth. Did you know, that God patterned the Ark of the Covenant, after the fashion of His royal chariot? The golden poles represent the platform the throne is to sit upon. And the gold cabinet, represents the throne of God resting upon the platform. And the two angels on the gold cabinet represents, the Father and the Son sitting on the throne. And when God wishes to travel, cherubim will bear up the platform on which the throne of God sits, and transport him wherever he desires to go. Do you remember this encounter? when the ark was transported across the Jordan River. Scripture says, And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. So, when the ark was transported across the river Jordan, the priest bore up the ark upon their shoulders, and they carried the ark across the river on dry land. If we could see this in the spiritual realm, it might look something like this. The cherubim, accompanied by wheels in a wheel, would be bearing up the throne of God, instead of the priest. And God would be seated on the throne, instead of two angels. And the adding of the cherubim, accompanied by the wheels in a wheel, makes this to become, the royal chariot of God. Did you know, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, on Palm Sunday, is patterned after his future second coming, on his royal chariot. Remember in Ezekiel, the glory of God, left the temple, mounted his royal chariot, went outside the city of Jerusalem, and stood on the Mount of Olives, and from there, ascended into heaven. Likewise, Jesus who is the glory of God, will descend from heaven in all his glory, upon the Mount of Olives, on his royal chariot, and proceed into Jerusalem through the east gate, which he came out of when he left the earth. The ass and the colt, Jesus sat upon to come into the city, represented his royal chariot. The ass and the colt were as the living creatures, the cherubim that bore up the platform that Jesus and his throne sat upon and the garments that the people cast upon the ass and the colt, were as the platform which the throne and Jesus sat upon. The presence of Jesus sitting on the ass and the colt, disproves the belief of Jesus coming standing on a cloud, and also disproves the belief of Him coming on a white horse. But you argue saying, Scripture says, 
and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Therefore, how can you say, his second coming will be on a chariot? I still maintain, that it will be a chariot. But his feet in that day, will be the feet of the cherubim, that will be bearing him up, that will stand on the Mount of Olives, as it was in the day when, their feet stood on the Mount of Olives, to lift him out of the earth. Again you say, what about when Scripture says? Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Here, he didn't go into heaven on a chariot, he ascended into heaven alone. So do you still maintain, that he will return on a chariot? I do. His disciples were watching as Jesus ascended into heaven, and was received into the clouds, out of their sight. The two angels commented on what they were seeing. They commented on the action that had taken place, not the mode in which the action was performed. Just as they watched, and saw Jesus gradually ascend into heaven, and was received into the clouds, so will he return from heaven, and appear out from the clouds, and gradually descend down to the earth. Think about it. For those of you who believes Jesus will return on a white horse. Well, he didn't ascend on a white horse either. These angels were commenting on the action the disciples were witnessing. Not the mode in which the action was being performed. You say, Scripture is very clear, that Jesus returns on a white horse in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation. How can you debunk that? In my study of His second coming, in every instance where God is stressing His second coming, it is always preceded by the signs in the sun, moon, and the stars, in both the Old and New Testaments. God always provides this witness for His second coming, as a demarcation from any other coming of Jesus. In chapter 19, of Revelation, it says, I saw heaven opened, and Jesus coming, riding on a white horse. Notice, it doesn't preface this with the signs in the sun, moon and stars. Therefore, this coming could be another coming, although it is being argued from the silence of the signs not being mentioned. But the real reason why this cannot be speaking of the second coming of Jesus, is because, at the opening of the sixth seal, Jesus' second coming is associated with the signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Whereas his coming on a white horse in Revelation 19, is happening during the opening of the seventh seal, with no mention of the signs, and after the opening of the sixth seal, when Jesus has already come. If you want a more in-depth study on this topic, see my video titled, Does Jesus Come on a White Horse at His Second Coming? Now, let's look at the opening of the sixth seal. Scripture says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. These stars that will fall from heaven onto the earth, are the stars of God, who are the fallen angels, and they will be cast out from their positions in heaven, to make room for us, for whom a place has been prepared for us, to rule and reign with Jesus, in His kingdom of heaven. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Each man of every sort, foreseeing what was coming upon the earth, hid themselves in the shelter of dens and caves. Now I want you to recognize, the most important sensory organ the people of that day, will be using to interpret the things coming upon the earth, is their eyesight. And notice how they described the appearance of the Lord. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Highlighted in the yellow, 
this is how they saw the appearance of Jesus, with their own eyes. They saw the face of Jesus, as he was sitting on his throne. Since they saw Jesus not standing, but sitting on his throne, then it stands to reason, that he was also sitting on his royal chariot, at this, his second coming. And not only this, but he is bringing with himself the beginning of the day of his wrath. Ask yourself, if the seven-year tribulation is the beginning and end of the wrath of God, then what is the purpose of him beginning his wrath again, at this, his second coming? In summary, I firmly believe, a deeper reading of Scripture shows that the second coming of Jesus, will be on his royal chariot, for that is how he left the earth in the beginning, and will be how he will arrive back to the earth, in the last days. If you do not have a personal relationship with God, that is able to cleanse you of all your sins, and you wish to be cleansed, and have a new birth to eternal life. Tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe He was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe He was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then, at that day when Jesus arrives, out from the clouds, on His royal chariot, you will go out to meet Him in the air, and escort Him back to earth, in a blaze of glory. Thanks for watching. When Jesus comes back, He will be driving His royal chariot in all His glory. And He will receive a King's welcome, when we also go out in our glory, to meet Him in the air. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and His voice was like a noise of many waters and the earth shined with His glory. Amen.